My chair in, empowered me to do more, so I, like I love being in the chair. I'm so confident about being in this wheelchair, like it doesn't bother me. Like, but it's also the community that we surround ourselves around. So why are we here early? Because we are fucking go-getters and we get shit done early, Jack. No excuses. Rather be early than late. We just grinding to make a way. We just grinding to find a way. He got the best beard in all of America. You know what? I'm trying to let people know that. We just grinding for better days. We just trying to find You'll hit him, you'll turn around and come back and cross the finish line. That will be your watch one time. If you catch up your weight, other than the green and the female sweat, you'll just go back out. We just see the one in the mirror. That hustle is in the rain. Just stay focused and maintain. Y'all ready? Ready? You have no fear in your heart. You're like, let's just get it done, right? Yeah. I like that. I'm, I'm amped up. I got some gloves from Kevin. If you don't know Kevin, you gotta go follow Kevin. He's a beast. He's not, he's not, he's not into the camera, bro. He's not. When you stare directly into the camera, they can't use that footage for the most part. So it's just really fun to mess with you with that footage. You need to work on that. Dad, she needs a better game face, man. I've been doing this shit here. I ain't no motherfucking rookie. And now I smoke on cookies. Got 56 in the jar. I got extra bag on the reefer, so it won't reek in my car. We just grinding for better days. We just trying to find us a way. We just trying to make us some change. <laughs> we just grinding for better days. We just trying to make us some change. We just grinding for better days. You got the wheelies, and it wouldn't be fair, I don't think, like, if the wheelies roll and we're rolling with the lower uh, amputees with the prosthetics. You know what I mean? Because it's completely different. Trying to make it some change. <laughs> yeah, I'ma keep on grinding till I find a way. A nigga eating while he's serving off them dirty plates. I'm talking license plates. Should I hold it up like it's 7 a.m.? Getting ready to do our first wide of the day for Waterpalooza. And what's better than having dime for breakfast? I mean, <laughs> It reminds me <laughs> of the picture in here. It's just so dope. Like, <laughs> dying for breath. Such a beautiful view, a beautiful, great feeling to just have something like this in your system as you're about to go out and push a couple miles, carrying some balls on your lap. That sound right. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I did a car accident, fractured my tibia like not too long ago, so. Oh, that's a terrible way. Oh, but I can't feel it, so no big deal. Really, it was just like, once the accident happened, I had to go speak to a group of special ed kids like a couple days after, and I just talked, and I y'all still went and spoke. And in my mind, I was saying, man, this was trying to stop me from motivating them. You know what I mean? Like, I was, I really, I was trying to teach them how to love yourself and everything, and I, I got a message two days ago from one of the kids like, hey, Wes, I just want to let you know I'm starting to love myself. You know what I mean? And so that was like me letting me know that 
I was supposed to do it, but something was always going to try to knock you off so that you won't do it. You know what I mean? And most people would say, oh, man, I had a car accident. I'm not going. My body hurts. I'm like, man, I can't feel this. I, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just... So, I'm, I feel great. You know what I mean? That's why I just compete in scale. I've already talked to Stouty. The only thing I want to do is to crawl. Oh, so look, I just uh, I was just practiced swimming, started swimming lessons uh, December 3rd, right after the accident. So I did that too. And now I can swim unassisted. Uh, you know how excited I am? I couldn't even swim before I was in a wheelchair. So. Keep on grinding till I find a way. A Keep the volume low. On Kite is that killer, it had your eyes low. New serves to serve for the high, cause that's a risky ride. Keep fucking with me, kinda tough, and I might low the price. But not enough to show my hand on my mama crying. Cause where I'm from, niggas done died over change. Almost there, almost there, there you go. In your face. It's Grind it all the way to the finish line. Woo! Stick to you. Call it Velcro. Let the shells go. What's up, bro? You killed it, man. Let's go! Come on, let's go! You got it! You got it! I like it because it's a community, bro. Like, and so I'm determined. I come a distance to come and meet up with everybody because it's it's different than when you at home and you just by yourself. That's why I told Michael. Michael was giving me a hard time. <laughs> and then Vanessa reached out to me on social media and was like, "Hey." You ever heard of CrossFit? And that was last year, or no, 2016. So my first count was March of 2016 at Working Wonder Games in North Carolina. I went to Orlando with my daughter, and it was just like, we did a lot of stuff, but I did this thing called a slingshot. Eight, she's eight now, so I did. Really? Badass, bro. It was this thing called a slingshot, shoot you all the way up in the air, and I, I did it, and my legs went back, so it must have snapped them back. But I didn't know. So I ended up going to the comp. Uh, I went to a gogi challenge and was killing it. And by the time I, by the time it was done, I woke up in the hospital with Vanette. It was rhabdo and I had fractured my femur. No. So I'm a spinal cord injury. Is that what you? T11, T12. Like how does they adapt? So for us, since I'm scale, we're I'm doing I'm competing in scale. Mine is assisted, so we'll probably have a life vest on. But the RX spinal cord injuries have to do uh, no assist. Um, it's really just going out into the water and just swim. I think they got 800 meters. What you got? 600 meters. I think we got 200 meters swim. But, so my injury will be six years Sunday. And I was 230 pounds when I first got injured. So I wasn't in that acceptance stage. So it took about three years. So I really neglected the therapy. And then I went through like pressure ulcer, bed rest for two years. Went through a lot of stuff, so, but I'm a single father, so my daughter was like two or three. I had to do something different, so I, I went to school and learned nutrition, and I lost like 100 pounds in a year. Then I went back to therapy, and they became great, you know? So like the, like the place I went, like I'm a success story on their wall now. Like I've done a lot in the community, um, trying to empower other people to not go through that depression stage, learn how to accept your, your disability and become more able with it and let it empower you, you know what I mean? So that's like me for people with spinal cord injuries is trying to show them how to do more. I couldn't move anything until I started working out. Any sensation? Look, yep. It came back after I started to push myself. Like, to me, it's a mental thing. So when I started working out and I'm in the gym, I do bodybuilding too. And what I found was that, you know, for someone else, like maybe you that's in the gym, you're pinning your legs down all the time. So it's like your brain is always sending to your legs to pin them down. And that's what really drives me to keep going back and back because I start to get more feeling time after time. Like, I know eventually something might wake up, but I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna walk again. Like I, literally, my chair empowered me to do more. So like, I love being in the chair. I'm so confident about being in this wheelchair. Like it doesn't bother me. Like, 
but it's also the community that we surround ourselves around. So being like an adaptive athlete and putting yourself under that uh, title, you know, and showing people how you can push yourself. Like I never did fitness before I was in a wheelchair. And now I'm like climbing ropes and stuff. Like this is crazy. You know, so it's all about when people's mindset change and they see like their purpose for maybe their situation. Cause I was shot, I was walking back to my car. I mean, I didn't even know the guy, you know what I mean? Like, so it was like that why, why, why stage. Vanessa, this is Vanessa. Can you meet them real quick? No, no, no. So there's students, Vanessa, for spinal cord. Is it spinal cord? Y'all work? Okay. But I told them that you do awesome shit. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm glad so they just had some questions, but I told them that you was like probably a pretty awesome one, and <laughs> you know you have a little bit more ability with your spinal cord injury than I do. So just they were just trying to get a little bit of information. It's all different, and you'll see. I mean, in our division, you might have the seated division, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we all have the same limitations. Every, uh, obviously, like I said, abilities are different, and so we just have to know how to modify based off of whatever they're going to throw at us. You can't do modifications for every single person. At some point, at this level, you really can't. At some competitions, they will do whatever it is that you need, but you really have to know as an athlete what that is for you, and then we have to relay that to you, and if there's anything that you see that might make it easier on us, then that's for you to throw at us as well. So it's, it's a two-way communication. I wrote a blog about traveling. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. It's crazy. It's crazy. They treat you like, they treat you like you're a terrorist. It is. Yeah, you get the strips, and they got to wipe you all down. You got to, it's like a whole workout. It is. It's a whole workout. It, I wish it was a lot simple, simpler, you know. And, it's worse now. It's getting and like I was telling them, like traveling with bags, like I used to have a big suitcase that always had a weight on help, and sometimes it was hard to get the help. So yeah. now, so now I bring a wheel, another wheelchair, and I put two bags on top of that, and I just push it with one arm. So you travel with two? Yeah, because I'll work out in a different chair. When I start competing, I have a whole cool looking chair. <laughs> it got, yeah, it got some rims <laughs> on it. <laughs> A lot of them haven't even uh, got a pressure ulcer before. Which is, you get if you're sitting down for too long? Sitting down too long. It goes different stages depending on how long you've sat. Uh, for me, my pressure ulcer, when I first had it, I was on bed rest for two years because I didn't know how to work with it. I drove to Houston for like 13 hours one time, went to a conference, Drove back 13 hours, got a stage two pressure ulcer, and it healed up in two weeks. But I couldn't do shit. You know what I mean? Like, it gets to a point where it's, it, it, it's bleeding out. So it's like pussy, and it's normally on your ass. So, like, sweat and stuff can't mix, or it makes it worse. But it's just from sitting. Like, because our, our skin is so bony that it breaks down quick. You know what I mean? Like yours got tone. Yours is harder to break down. But since I don't have no muscle tone, my bone is just, yep. So like with, with, with uh, sweat, with sweat, sweat makes it even softer. Grinding in the street, but still got an hourly wage. What you trying to do? Yeah, that's my favorite quote. 16 of the loudest can keep the volume low. Uh, on Kitey's that killer, it had your eyes low. New serves to serve for the high, cause that's a risky ride. Keep fucking with me, kind of tough, and I might load the price. So, uh, out of everybody I met yesterday, you're my favorite person. Really? Yeah. We good conversation. And don't, everything is pretty light, fun. Yeah. But also, I love the nonprofit. But it's able, but not really. I looked it up. Really? On the website. <laughs> it out. Awesome, man. Hey, I, I appreciate it. it. And so, anyway, at some point this weekend, if you got time, I know you're competing stuff. Yeah. Come by the uh, the Captain Kills booth again. Uh -huh. I want to do an interview with you about it. Okay. And we'll put it on our YouTube channel. Awesome, bro. Is that cool with you? No, it's awesome. That'd be, I, I would love that. I love it too. This is gonna be so scary, dude. <laughs> Is that how you do it? I'm getting a fucking hammock. 
Peekaboo. <laughs> Jack, you gotta say who in there. You gotta be like, who in there? And I'm gonna pop out like. It's me! <laughs> Serves to serve for the high, cause that's a risky ride. Keep fucking with me, kinda tough, and I might low the price. But not enough to show my hand, don't want my mama crying. Cause where I'm from, niggas done died over change. Pull up to serve them, look up, got a strap in your face. It's fucked up, ain't it? But that's just how they do you. So they gun that you got, better stick to you. Call it Velcro, let the shells go. I ain't for the violence, but he pushed me, and Lord knows. Just for better days, we just trying to find us a way. We just trying to make us some change. <laughs> We're just grinding for better days. We're just trying to find a way. We're just grinding to make a way.